Welcome to my 248th video on my work with OO gauge. This video will feature a somewhat obscure three rail OO gauge model, a TTR Trix Twin Railways model of an 060 tank engine. I say this is an obscure model, well, I don't claim to be an expert on everything produced in the way of Trix Twin, but I certainly had no idea that this model even existed until I saw this one listed on eBay UK. And I didn't really hesitate much before buying it, as I'm always interested in something different in the way of three-rail locomotive models. Here's the model on my workbench as it arrived. It was sold as a complete running Trix three-rail model. Now, I do basically like to model LMS operations before World War II, and this is not an LMS engine. It's in BR markings, although they've come off quite a bit. I'm pretty sure it's based on the Southern E2 class, which I gather was the model for most well-known incarnations of Thomas the Tank Engine. So, not quite fitting to my prototype, but still, it's nice to finally have a purpose-made 3-rail 060 tank. There never was a Hornby 00 3-rail 060 tank. They did the Southern R1 class, but that was only in 2-rail. Here's the bottom of the model. I thought that this looked fairly promising for running on 00 track, as it has the later Trix type of fine scale wheels, not the earlier ones with massive flanges. And it also appears to have centre rail pickups that are well sprung and have a decent curvature to them, so they're likely to run well over the 00 centre rail without getting stuck in gaps, which can be a problem with Trix pickups, which sometimes have their ends almost horizontal. But as you may see here, both pickups on this model were nicely curved, with their ends tucked up out of the way. I wanted to clean the wheels first, as they looked fairly filthy, and I didn't want to dump dirt onto my double O track. It's always a bit of a struggle keeping that track sufficiently clean for good running. I started out by running the motor with my bench power supply, and it did seem to run OK, and cleaning the wheels with some T-cut on cotton buds. Although quite a lot of dirt came off on the cotton buds with the T-cut, the wheels still didn't look really clean, so I cleaned them further with a bronze brush and a rotary tool, which did bring them up nice and shiny. With the wheels cleaned, I gave the model a trial run on my 003 rail tabletop. OK, now that I've cleaned its wheels so it won't filth up my track, and I know its motor ran, on the bench, let me see if I can get this little quick three rail tank. Oops, I'm sorry, <laughs> running on the uh, tracks here. It clearly has trouble maintaining contact. That's also 90% power on the um, Gauge Master controller. Gauge Master controller is not a very strong controller, it doesn't let you go that far. It's a, a modest sort of controller, but it seems to be, it's sort of going round, but it, oh, it's stopping on like virtually every blithering point, isn't it? Of course, it's being tricks, it only picks up on one side from the outside, it only picks up from the right side, because they wanted to allow trains to go in either direction, so they used the two outer rails differently, that's why it's called tricks twin railways, because you could run two trains in different opposite directions on the same track without isolating. Okay, well, so, basically, it sort of runs, but it, won't get, it can't really get over the points much, and, uh, and it needs a lot of power. So I guess we'll try and bring it back, and, oh, for goodness sake, it really does stop on pretty much every point. Certainly does, okay. I'm gonna try and stop it now if I can. Uh, well, there you go, so runs but not too well. Clearly the model could do with some servicing, so I took it back to the bench and I wanted to get the body off. I had no information about this model at all. I checked for something looking like a body retention screw and found this screw in the chimney. 
I was surprised to find when I undid that screw that the whole top part of the chimney came with it. An unusual arrangement. Usually body retention screws in the chimneys of old models just come out of the top of the chimney, with the whole chimney being cast into the body. Even with the chimney screw removed, it wasn't possible to remove the body. I thought that the screws holding on the couplings might also connect body and chassis, and in any case the chassis couldn't be removed from the body with the couplings in place, as the couplings were screwed to the chassis and went right through slots in the body. So I went ahead and undid the coupling screws. Here's the front coupling removed along with its shouldered screw, so that the screw can be tightened but the coupling will still pivot. I also undid the rear coupling screw and remove the rear coupling. Front and back couplings were the same. The slots in the body limited their pivoting. The coupling screws were quite small and didn't connect to the body at all, but as noted, it was necessary to remove the couplings to get the chassis out of the body anyway because of the way the couplings went right through the body. At this point, I figured I should be able to get the chassis out of the body, but I wasn't quite sure how. I checked and found these two slots on the back of the body, apparently with lugs on the chassis fitting into them. With lugs like that on one end of the chassis, the other end will need to be lifted out of the body first, and that proved to be the case here. I was now able to lift the front of the chassis away from the body. I actually had to lift it quite a long way, as there was a large metal piece at the front of the chassis serving as a weight, and that had to clear the body before the chassis could be pulled forward, removing the rear lugs from their slots. Here's the chassis out of the body. The motor is a little similar to a trying X04, but quite different in a number of ways. This Trix motor had brushes pivoted in slots on the top of the motor, similar to an X04, but whereas the X04 has a spring on the top pushing out the top of each brush, this motor had separate springs for each brush below the top piece pushing the brushes inwards. There was a screw on the bottom of the chassis holding the motor in place. I undid that screw and removed the motor, but I wasn't able to entirely detach it from the chassis as a wire from the wheel pickups was soldered to the top of the motor. The top piece of the motor in which the brushes pivoted was made of some kind of fibre board. One brush spring was connected to the wheel pickup wire through a red component, and the other brush spring was connected to the body of the motor itself by a similar red component. The red components weren't marked. I'm thinking that they must be resistors. I was able to lever the brush springs away from the brushes with a small screwdriver, but even with the brush free of the spring like this, I couldn't actually get the brush out, as the angle of the top piece was too sharp and couldn't be got out from the groove. I really wanted to get at the commutator to clean it, so I undid the screw holding the fiberboard piece onto the top of the motor. With that screw removed, I was able to lift up the fiberboard piece and get the brushes away from the commutator. I cleaned the commutator with tea cut on cotton buds, and I used a toothpick to remove debris from the grooves. I oiled the bearings of the motor. I found it impossible to screw the fiberboard piece back to the top of the motor. The red components got in the way too much, so I couldn't get the screw straight to go into the hole. So I had to get out my soldering station and unsolder one end of the component attached to the motor body, as seen here. With that component unsoldered at the brush spring end, I was able to bend it out of the way and so get at the screw properly to reattach the fiberboard to the top of the motor. Then I resoldered the end of the red component back to the connector for the brush. I tried the motor with my bench supply, and was pleased and somewhat relieved to find that it did run fine. Next I wanted to remagnetize the motor. The model did actually run the wrong way on the tracks going backwards when I had the controller set to the normal forward direction. I considered trying to reverse the polarity, but I decided to just leave it the way it was, which was probably how Trix made it. 
the north pole of the magnet was towards the top of the motor. I would have changed the polarity if it were easier to remove the magnet from the motor, but I didn't particularly want to try and change the actual polarity of the magnet, and I didn't really want to undo the wiring and change it all over, so I left the polarity the way it was. I cleaned the inside of the wheels that had pickups on them, as that was where the pickups would be making contact. Trix Twin Locos only pick up from the side rail on one side. That was done so that two trains going in opposite directions could be run on the same connected tracks, one powered through one side rail and one through the other, hence the twin, the Trix Twin name, because two trains could be run at once without special isolation. In this case, the side pickup was just going through the front and back wheels on the left side of the model. You can see the pickups here pressing against the inside of the front and back wheels. And I did try to clean the ends of those pickups themselves as well. I put some molly grease onto the worm and the drive gear. I oiled all of the motion and axle pivot points as best as I could. The axles were a bit difficult to reach. I got the motor into my Dodds magnetizer and re-magnetized it, keeping the north pole at the top of the motor. I refitted the motor to the chassis, slotting it into its guides and redoing the retaining screw. I tested the chassis with power through the center rail pickup and the wheels. It seemed to work okay. Next I wanted to redo the markings. The decals for the BR markings had come off quite a bit. Unfortunately for me, the body was cast with raised bases for the markings. The decals were more intact on the other side, but I was able to scrape them off with a fingernail without even using any softener. Removing the raised bases for the VR logos was very tricky. I couldn't really get at them with a knife because of other raised features on the body. I resorted to using an unattached knife blade to try to scrape off the raised sections. I removed the raised sections with the knife blade as much as I could and then sanded with fine grit paper. That still left the sides of the tanks looking rather messy. I used some rouge on cotton buds to polish the sides of the tanks. At this point I felt that I could live with the state of the body as a base for applying new markings. I used small digits from an HMRS Pressfix yellow LMS transfer set to apply a running number. I just went with using the base that had been cast in place for the original running number. The number I went with was 1725, which would make this a Midland 1F tank loco. It doesn't really look quite like a Midland 1F, but at least it has the right wheel and cylinder configuration, and the body layout is fairly similar. I put Pressfix yellow LMS letters onto the tank sides. Here's the body after my remarking attempts. I fitted the chassis back into the body, screwed the top of the chimney back on, and refitted the couplings. And here's the model on the bench after the completion of my work. I got it back onto the tracks for some running. It seemed to run fairly okay, although still struggling a bit to get over the double O points. No tendency to derail, but it would just stop when electrical contact was lost. I found that the model ran much better going anti-clockwise than clockwise, which would mean it got on better taking its side power from the inner rail. I hooked it up with a little freight train, which it had no trouble at all pulling. So now I'll finish with a little running video of that train. Okay, let me see if I can show you this little Trix three rail tank engine running on my double O layout. It's a wee bit of a problem in that it struggles a bit going over double O points. And I thought at first that was perhaps because of the center rail pickup, but I did some sort of testing, like sort of tilting it on a point and whatever. It seems like the center rail pickup actually maintains contact pretty well. It's the side pickups that are causing the problem, because of course as a Trix Twin Loco, it only picks up from one side rail, so 
the wheels on one side of it, the front and back two, two wheels basically, the front and back wheels on one side pick up, but there's no pickup at all on the other side, and as such it's struggling a bit to maintain continuity going over the double O points. But we'll see. Now I've got, I'm running on the MRC sound and power controller now, because again he seems to need a lot of, but he will run on the Gauge Master, but needs most of the power that the Gauge Master can supply, and even that's hardly enough to get him over the points, so I'm doing him on the, I'm giving him about 70% on the, on the MRC. That's about 70% on the MRC. See, he's not that fast even at that. And I did remagnetize him. I, I've done what I can. I've serviced him. I've cleaned the commutator. I remagnetized him. I've oiled everything that I could, oiled and greased everything that I could get up, get at to oil and grease. But he's not running too badly now. Actually, he runs better this way than the anti-clockwise than the other way because it's easier for him to maintain contact to uh, his side rail pickups going around this way. He also runs backwards relative to everything else, but I didn't try to reverse the direction. I'm assuming he was probably designed to work that way. And you know, he's a trips loco, not a double O loco. It's not the end of the world if he runs the opposite way around to everything else. And rather than trying to muck around reversing the magnetism of the motor or whatever, or reversing the wires, I just left him the way he was. Just have to remember, okay, I'm going to try and stop him now. Well, I can't reach the... The problem is it's hard to operate the camera and reach the controller because I've got to bend down <laughs> to the ground to get at the controller. Oh, well, there you go. 